Alright, we are going to talk about tides today. So, because we live in Colorado, you probably don't notice tides too often, but um, they do happen. If you've ever been to the ocean, you know that there's times when the ocean is higher and times when the ocean is lower. So, we are going to talk about tides. So, there are, let's see here. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I think will help you understand tides. And they are not super cool or, um, I mean, they're as age appropriate as I can possibly get. <laughs> so. This is a great spot. Yeah, let's set up here and go check out the boardwalk. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. that was your favorite thing that we've ever done on these videos. Um, Alright, so back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so um, what are tides? Well, tides are the daily rise and fall, as I said in the video, of waters on coastlines. They happen in oceans and seas and any just large body of water. So even the Great Lakes, because they're so huge, experience tides. Um, <coughs> when the tide's coming in, the level of the water on the beaches are rising. When the tide goes out, it's falling or going down. Um, and tides occur in all bodies of water, but we notice them most in oceans and lakes. High tides are when, um, right there on the table is fine, thanks. Um, high tides are when the water reaches the highest point, and low tides are when the water reaches the lowest point. So this is the same area, high tide, low tide, high tide, 
low tide. So what causes the tides? As they said, there are two huge um, gravitational interactions that are occurring, so back to gravity again. Um, we have the interaction between the moon and the earth because the moon is so close even though it's a, uh, smaller than the earth and then we have the <coughs> excuse me interaction between the sun and the earth um, we know that gravity is the reason for tides and it's the force that's exerted by the object that pulls one object closer to it so the moon is so close that it often will pull the earth towards it and therefore the water towards it um, and the sun is so massive remember gravity depends on both mass and um, how far it is away from something Okay, because the sun is so massive it also has a gravitational pull on the uh, water on earth so the moon's gravity. The moon's gravity affects the water on the Earth's surface. Since the moon is close to Earth, it has a strong gravitational pull on it. Um, remember, closer objects have stronger gravitational pull. So, move me really quick. There we go. Okay, um, you've got the Earth right here and the moon right here. And so the moon is close, so it's pulling the water on this side of the Earth away from the Earth's surface. Um, when the moon does this it's called a tidal bulge and the moon pulls on the water on the side nearest to it more strongly than it pulls on the center of the earth so we have right here the earth we have the moon and so the pull of gravity is right here okay pulling the center of the earth towards it the pull creates a bulge of water called a tidal bulge or tide bulge on the side facing the earth well, the water on the side facing away from the earth has a less strong pull. This water is left behind and forms a second bulge. So we have another bulge over here. As earth rotates, different places on the planet's surface pass through the areas of the tidal bulge and have a change in water levels. Remember, this side is bulging because the moon is actually pulling the earth a little closer to it. Okay, and so therefore uh, the water is staying where it is and it creates a second bulge. So in places where the tidal bulge, there are tidal bulges, high tide is occurring. So when there's a tidal bulge, it is high tide. And the places in between the bulges, low tide is occurring. So right here and right here. And remember, the moon, as it rotates around the earth like this, it's going to change places. So this bulge is going to rotate. It's going to be here, 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 here. And it's going to rotate all around. Um, sun's gravity and tides. So the sun is so large that gravity also affects the tides. Um, at times the sun and the moon pull together on the earth's waters in the same direction and at times they pull in different directions. So you see here they are pulling in different directions but not opposite directions. Here they're both pulling in the same direction. Here they're pulling in exact opposite directions. So the daily tide cycles. Most seashores have four tides every day two high tides and two low tides. So here's our little graph. We've got a high tide here, high tide here, low tide here, low tide here. A change from low tide to high tide or vice versa takes about six hours and 12 minutes. How exact? Um, changes in tide can be drastic or not as drastic. So they can be super noticeable or not noticeable at all. Uh, the monthly tide cycle, so changes in the position of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, so this is the system that we've been talking about, um, affect the height of the tides during that month. So, when you have the Moon in between the Sun and the Earth, they're both pulling the Earth this way, so we are going to have a very strong high tide here. Okay, When the Moon is moving around, it changes the tides, the uh, degree of the high tide or the low tide. So spring tides. So spring tides occur twice a month and they occur during a full moon. Okay, full moon because they are, the moon is pulling really strong here and the sun is pulling really strong here. So the um, bulge is larger in those areas. And the new moon, when it's here, um, you're going to get a huge spring tide because it is pulling very uh, heavily in one direction. Um, Spring tides are higher and lower than normal tides. So they're higher, okay, when you have them both pulling, and lower, okay. Um, so lower for the low tide regions would be during spring tides.
These are strong tides, meaning they're changing from being very high to very low in the same day. Remember, it happens twice a day for that day on that month. Neap tides. Neap tides occur in between spring tides. Uh, they happen when the first and third quarter moons are existing. So remember the first and third quarter exist when it makes a 90 degree angle with the sun. Um, neap tides are not as high or as low as normal tides. Um, these are weak tides, so there's not much of a change in between um, the level of the water from high tide to low tide. So this would be a spring tide, this would be a spring tide with a full moon, this would be a neap tide either with a first or third quarter moon. Alright, and then there's one more little tiny thing I want to show you just so that we are all on the same page. And this is the simulation, so if I go ahead and click run, you're going to notice, so here's the tidal bulge. Okay, you're going to notice that as the globe turns, the bulge moves with the moon. Now if I include the sun, here's the sun right here. Okay, you're going to notice that as we move towards, and we have both the sun and the moon, here comes the full moon phase. Look how much bigger the pull happens and you end up with a spring tide. Here, as we get to be a 90 degree angle, look it gets a lot more even around all sides, so this would be your neap tide. Okay, and then we're going to see one more spring tide and then I'll pause it. So look at how much it's pulling, they're both pulling in the same direction. We're getting the spring tide. And then one more time, you'll notice when it is at a 90 degree angle, you are going to get a neap tide where there isn't much of a change between high and low tide. Alright, I hope that makes sense. Thanks!